My favorite raid has returned and all of the weapons along with it. Well, at least some of them. Heads up everybody, my name is Sentinel Grey and welcome to the channel. The good old Vault of Glass raid from D1 is back in D2 with a few new tweaks and a whole lot of nostalgia. Luckily, we have the vast majority of the weapons from Vault of Glass returning. Granted, we're missing two of them, but I mean, it's better than nothing or getting completely different weapons. So luckily, with the Vault weapons returning, we get a few new perks that can roll on them as well. The first one is Rewind Rounds. Rewind Rounds. Rewind Rounds. Bungie, my speech impediment cannot keep up with your bullshit right now. Anyway, Rewind Rounds gives ammo back to your magazine based on the number of hits you get when your magazine is empty. So there are two things about this perk you should know. First is that the rounds it gives back to your mag is equal to half of the number of rounds you hit. So if you land like 20, it should give you around somewhere like 10 rounds back. The nice thing is, is that this applies to those returned rounds as well. Meaning if you hit those 20, then you get 10 back and you hit those 10, you'll get five and so on and so on and so on. The other thing is that even if you land all of the rounds in your magazine on target, if you miss the final round from your magazine, the perk does not activate, meaning you'll have to reload your gun like normal. The second perk we get is an old returning one called Firefly. Now before you say anything, yes, this is the same Firefly that we have on Ace of Spades. However, we're lucky enough to get them on Vault of Glass weapons. And before you say anything else, I know. It can also roll on Hung Jury, the returning Nightfall weapon. But the place you'll find this perk the most currently is Vault of Glass weapons. With Firefly, precision kills increase reload speed for 6 seconds and cause targets to explode dealing solar damage specifically. Firefly is essentially Outlaw and Dragonfly mixed into a single perk, which I will happily have on literally any gun that it can roll on. That being said, these two perks are so good in my opinion that if your vault weapons roll with them, I strongly consider keeping them no matter what the other perk is on it. And even though these two perks aren't really that synergistic, having both of these on your gun, like how most of them can roll with, is still a huge advantage because of how good they are just by themselves. All right, now let's talk about those guns. Just so all of you know moving forward, Though I personally have certain roles I'm searching for on each of these guns, they won't be for everybody. In my previous video, I've talked about how some people love certain perk combos while they don't entirely vibe with me. So instead of sitting here telling you what the god tier role is on each of these guns, I want to preface it with this. It is going to be very rare for you to roll some of these vault weapons and have them be 100% garbage. The perks that these guns can roll with, in my opinion, are some of the best in the entire game. Like, they have some of the best perk pools to pull from. Sure, maybe there are one or two that can really aggravate you because you got the wrong combo of perks, but for the most part, any roll you get is bound to be useful. So with that out of the way, let's start with Praetith's Revenge. Praetith's Revenge is a rapid fire frame sniper rifle, meaning more ammo reserves and a quicker reload whenever the magazine is empty. If you've been through the vault already, then you'll know that dealing with oracles can be a tedious job depending on the weapons that you have at the time. A Praetith with rewind rounds and either Frenzy or high impact reserves will be an absolute best friend to you when dealing with them, I promise. This role can be extremely useful outside of the vault as well. I know there are some people out there who will skip over using Praetith in endgame content because of it being a rapid fire frame and having a severe lack of damage output as compared to like Succession from the Deepstone Crypt raid. However, I think Praetith is an awesome sniper rifle while you're doing things from day to day. This also wouldn't be a bad pick for you Crucible players too. If you can land those headshots and have a roll with quick draw and opening shot, you'll be a force to be reckoned with. Next up is Corrective Measure. This is a 450 RPM machine gun, so it's the same type of frame as Commemoration from the Deepstone Crypt. I'm sure the question you're asking though is, can it compete with Commemoration? And I can confidently tell you yes, for a couple of different reasons. 
First reason being is because corrective measure can roll with rewind rounds. If you want to compare the two, reconstruction that commemoration can roll with, of course, reloads your weapon for you to double capacity. But with rewind rounds, once you start firing, you don't need to stop as long as you nail your shots. But rewind rounds isn't the only thing that makes corrective measure stand up to commemoration. It's also, in my opinion, the only weapon where adrenaline junkie can actually shine and be the most useful that it can be. While Adrenaline Junkie is an option in its fourth column, in its third column it could roll with Demolitionist. If you're new to these two perks, you might wonder why, so I'll explain. Adrenaline Junkie increases the damage of your weapon for every grenade kill up to a max of times 3 for a 30% damage boost. While this is all well and great, that means you have to get 3 kills with your grenade. And for most people, your grenade kills maybe an average of two enemies while severely hurting like third or fourth. The idea of having to spend my grenade in order to get bonus damage on my gun isn't appealing to me in the least bit, which is why I think this perk is only useful with Demolitionist. Since Demo gives back grenade energy on enemy kill and reloads your weapon for you when you throw your grenade, I can't see why you wouldn't always tag these two together. It's very similar to my thoughts on Surplus and Wellspring. Alone, the perk suffers, but in the right perk that synergizes with it, it can be really, really good. But with that being said, I still want a corrective measure with rewind rounds and high impact reserves, since the less rounds you have in the magazine, the more the damage ramps up. And since rewind rounds returns half the magazine, you already start out at, you know, like the damage boost that you'll get for having half your ammo back. It's it synergizes. It synergizes real well. Trust me. Next is Vision of Confluence, the Scout Rifle. Granted, scout rifles aren't entirely in the best place right now, and since Vision of Confluence and Hung Jury are in the same archetype, what I'm about to say applies to both of these guns. 180 RPM scouts have no problem working against your run-of-the-mill enemies. Acolytes, Scions, Vandals, all of them are easily taken down by this type of gun. However, if you were to put something a little bit tougher in front of them, they almost immediately feel lacking. Like, I've used Vision and Hung Jury both on things of varying difficulty and for normal everyday gameplay, it feels fine, but it needs a lot of help against, like, everything else. That being said, Vision still isn't a weapon you should immediately shard just because it's a scout rifle. One of the reasons for this is because of what it can roll with it. Like, almost no matter what role you land on this, there will be a use for it, whether it's PvE or PvP. You will have a use for it. In fact, I personally think that Vision probably has the most useful perk pull in the entire game. Better than Palindrome, better than Commemoration, and better than Hung Jury. Let me give you an example. Vision is the only weapon in the game that can roll with both Wellspring and Thresh at the same time. So for those of you who've been looking for a weapon for that pure ability build that you've been waiting months for, this is going to be the gun for you. Maybe add on a couple of those elemental well mods and this is the only gun you'll want to use for it. Or maybe you want this thing for Grandmasters. It can roll with rewind rounds and disruption break, so as long as you hit those enemies, shields or not, you'll have ammo in the mag, plus breaking their shields will leave enemies wide open to some insane kinetic damage. Seriously, if there is one gun you should farm for in this raid, I strongly argue you should do it for Vision of Confluence. Hazen Vengeance is the Vault of Glass rocket launcher, and I'm still not sure how I feel about it. At its base, it can roll with a number of good perks for a rocket launcher, and is the only one currently that can land with overflow on it, which means that increases the one rocket in the tube to two rockets. The problem is, is that since Hazen isn't a precision frame, it doesn't automatically have tracking on it, which means that Royal Entry, the rocket launcher you can get by just playing strikes, is kind of considered a better option for, you know, landing rockets on a moving target. Now the question here though is this, if you already have a Code Duello from last season that has the same exact perks and traits as Hazen, which does more damage and by how much? 
I believe Hazen would deal more damage outright, but I don't know if it would be enough to warrant you trying to farm one out. But since this is a rocket launcher, you'll want perks like auto loading holster or overflow in the third column. For the fourth, it'll depend on what you want to use it for. Hazen does have the weird benefit to roll with both Vorpal Weapon and Lasting Impression in its fourth slot. And with the numbers that I'm looking at here, thank you to D2 Gunsmith, Lasting Impression will deal more damage in the long run with the target getting hit initially with the rocket and then the explosion dealing 20% more damage as opposed to Vorpal Weapon's 15% damage. Plus, Vorpal only works against bosses. So it's up to you if you want to go for a god roll one on one of these or not. Personally, I don't think it's worth the spoils, but I don't think it's been through that thorough of testing yet. So a little update on this since I started recording this video, I was actually able to talk to a few of my friends to see their perspective on this. And it's all basically agreed by them that if you have a good code duello, like if you have a code duello that has auto loading holster and lasting impression, you aren't going to need to farm out for a Hazen Vengeance. In fact, uh, what one of them said is Hazen Vengeance is probably the last weapon that you should farm for from Vault if you already have a code duello that has a really good roll that you like on it. So you don't have to worry about spending the spoils until you get everything that you want already out of this raid, then maybe work on Haze and Vengeance. Next is the Shotgun Found Verdict, and just to preface this, I have yet to receive this thing on a roll, I've, like I don't even have this thing unlocked from the vault weapons yet or anything like that, so I don't have any first-hand experience. Although that's the case, I'm just looking at the base stats here for all the other aggressive frame shotguns. And Found Verdict has them all beat by what I would consider a pretty good margin. For you Crucible players, I can see this being a monster since it can roll with Slideways and Vorpal Weapon, plus the range on it can go far above something like, you know, Astral Horizon, that's the same archetype. For us PvE players though, I feel as though the best roll for this thing would be Rewind Rounds and 1-2 Punch. Since Rewind works on hits, no matter if you stow your weapon or not, meleeing enemies won't affect it, as well as meaning you could potentially stretch what little rounds you have in the mag to go a little further. Though this may not be your number one choice of shotgun for everyday use, I think it has the potential to replace Python as a top tier damage dealing 1-2 punch shotgun. Luckily, if you don't happen to have rewind or auto loading on this shotgun, it can roll with frenzy, so you can have that reload speed that the archetype intrinsically lacks. Finally, we have everyone's old school favorite, Fatebringer, the hand cannon. Like its old D1 counterpart, this thing can roll with both explosive payload and firefly. However, unlike its D1 counterpart, these two perks no longer interfere with each other. Back in D1, Explosive Payload worked a little differently, so it would hit or miss whether Firefly would actually trigger after a precision kill. Since Bungie reworked Explosive Payload for D2, we can now trigger Firefly on every Explosive Payload crit kill. Luckily, that's not the only good roll that Fatebringer can roll with. Like most of the vault weapons, Fatebringer has access to rewind rounds in addition to Frenzy and Kill Clip. Even though that's the case, I will say Fatebringer has a whole bunch of perks that can either roll really well or really poorly. There's a good variation of perks for PvE and PvP, but if you get the wrong combo like Osmosis and Opening Shot, then you have a roll that ends up severely lacking. Even with that being said, if you land a good roll on Fatebringer, it'll put in tons of work for you no matter what you're doing. Granted, the explosive payload that it can roll with would help with overload champions, but the only perk that could even remotely pair with that well is Frenzy, which isn't that attractive of an option, but it's there if you want to use it. So I'm not going to be talking about Vex Mythoclast in this video. One, because I don't have it. And two, because if you want me to talk about it, I feel like it deserves its own full video. So, if you're into that, let me know down in the comments below, and once I finally get one to drop for me, I'll do a little video up for you guys going over it. As far as the other weapons go, like I said before, there are some awesome rolls that you can get on these things that I think 100% are worth going for if you plan on running the vault over and over again. So that is going to be it for me for today, everyone. I hope you all really like the video. I've been trying out a new way to explain and get the information across. So if something either works or does not, please let me know. 
And remember to subscribe and leave a like on the video since it really helps out the channel. And if you like live content, I stream on Twitch every Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I will leave a link for that down in the, in the description box below. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll see you all next time. And remember, keep your heads up and be kind to each other. Bye now.